Hi everybody, welcome back to the Bison Track Gear YouTube channel. My name is Rob, I'm the co-founder of Bison Track, and today we're going to talk about crashes. That's right, it's one of the most unfortunate aspects of our hobby or sport. As we all know, sometimes gravity wins the battle over our two tires and we find ourselves on the ground pretty quickly. When you crash, if all goes well, as well as it could, you're gonna jump up, assess the situation with your motorcycle, see how damaged that was, and then you're gonna look down at your gear. And what you might find is that your nice, expensive leathers, gloves, and boots are gonna be all scuffed up, potentially even worse, following an incident. Now there's lots of different ways to crash a motorcycle, we all know that, and each one of those crashes affects your gear differently. Uh, low speed, low side, for instance, affects your gear in much different ways than a high speed high side does. So let's talk about how we can assess your gear very easily following one of these incidents. We're first going to talk about the incidents and figure out which one you may have had and then we're going to talk about how to look at the gear. So let's do this, get you back on the horse looking good and most importantly being 100% safe next time. So first we're going to talk about the types of crashes and what you should look for in your gear when it comes time to inspect it following an incident. As an expert in the industry, I'm commonly approached or contacted by people with gear from various brands uh, just asking whether or not it held up well in an incident. The first thing I ask is I, I need more information about the, the crash, okay? Um, as many details as possible. The speed of the crash, the angle of the crash, the surface type of the track or, or street, uh, whether or not they tumbled or slid and for how far did they slide or tumble. So you've probably heard this before, but it rings true. Every crash is different and every crash affects uh, your gear in a very unique way because a high speed low side, for instance, on a newly paved smooth asphalt track is going to affect gear differently than a high speed low side on a older track with a much coarser surface. So with that in mind, we're gonna try and narrow the focus to just a few types of crashes. Uh, we're gonna explain how they affect the integrity of your gear in different ways. And we're gonna start with the high speed high side. So we're gonna start with a high speed high side. This is like the granddaddy of crashes. Uh, what happens is the rear tire loses traction, usually in a turn, and then it violently hooks up and catapults the rider several feet in the air. So it stops, turns, shoots the rider into the air. We've all seen it. Hopefully you haven't experienced it. And what happens when you come down from a high side is that uh, you usually flip up, you know, legs over the top, and you come down on the top of your head, your shoulder, your back, that sort of thing, and you slam down on your back. And then all your extremities, your arms and legs, hit the ground behind that with a lot of force. And what that means is because of the violent nature of this incident, you are exerting torque on your seams and your leather on your suit that is um, very extreme. And what happens is there are multiple ways that it can damage the gear because you're impacting and then there's usually a slide and or tumble after that. So you get all of the, uh, the gamut of damage in one run. And so the most common damage from a high speed, high side crash is going to be general scuffs everywhere, of course, but also tears, not only uh, with the seams because the seams are going to stretch and pull. And what you're gonna have is potentially broken threads or um, also slid through threads from the slide. You, know, you can burn through those threads. So potential thread damage, but also the seams can uh, damage in the leather side as well especially if you have Kevlar thread on your gear. What happens is the Kevlar thread actually wins the battle against the leather and it can tear the leather hide at the holes. So you wanna inspect the hide and uh, take that a step further if you have perforated leather on the back of your suit. Perforated leather, I've said this many times before, it's no different than perforating paper or cardboard. It makes it easier to tear. So you do get the benefit of airflow, but also the downside of uh, a little bit of a loss of durability. So inspect all your seams, especially on the back, the shoulders, the arms, upper arms, that sort of thing, around the speed hump, that would be another area to check. You wanna pull the armor out of your suit or jacket and inspect that because in rare cases, the impact, especially if it's cold outside, can break your armor. 
So you want to check that out and replace any damaged armor, of course. Last thing you want to check is the zippers on your gear because again, when you come down and there's all that torque exerted on the entirety of the suit or jacket, your zippers are going to be under a lot of strain as well. Now here at Bison, we install big heavy duty YKK metal zippers on your suit. So you shouldn't have any issues, but especially if you have the nylon or plastic zippers, definitely want to inspect those because once they pop and they're compromised, they'll never be the same again. Next, we're going to talk about another high-speed incident, but this time it's going to be a low side. So instead of the bike sliding, hooking up, and catapulting you, the bike just slides out from under you and you find yourself on the ground. And what happens here in a high-speed low side is that your hip, your knee, and your uh, forearm are going to be the first things to touch the track, and especially on the forearm. What that means is you're going to want to inspect the main seam at your forearm, the main seam on your hip, of your suit, make sure that the stitching hasn't been slid through. At Bison, we install Stingray panels on the hip and forearm in anticipation of a low side crash. Those are the first things to hit the asphalt. What that Stingray does is it's almost impenetrable, so it protects the seams, uh, those main seams on your extremities, but it also acts like a hockey puck. When it hits the ground, it's like a hockey puck on ice. You have a moment to slide. Because what happens in a low side when you hit the ground is all of a sudden, you have friction and torque, and that will create a tumbling effect. You're going to grab and uh, possibly tumble. It's also going to create heat spots on your uh, gear, especially your leathers or your gloves, as you slide along the asphalt. So it's good to stay prone, stay in one position. Don't tumble, don't, don't try to tuck in and tumble. Just tuck and slide or put your arms out and slide. But what that does is creates hot spots, and that can thin or even uh, go through your leather hides. So make sure that you're inspecting any areas on your suit or gloves that may have been in contact with the asphalt for an extended slide. The third type of crash that we're going to talk about is just a low speed crash. Now low speed crashes can happen just like the high speed ones. You can have high sides, you can have low sides, but they can be surprisingly brutal on suits and gloves. And that's something a lot of people don't think about. People think if you're going slower, your chances of being hurt are less and the chances of hurting your gear are less. And actually, all it means is that there are different types of injuries and different types of damage to your gear. So higher speeds can generally allow your suit and gloves to slide along the asphalt. And uh, like I said, you may have some burn through seams. You may have some thin spots on your hide, your leather. Now, low speed impacts can actually grab and pull the leather with more torque. And what that means is it can tear seams, it can create holes in the uh, in your gear, and it, it can do so very surprisingly. And you might think, well, that was just a low speed crash. How could that happen? But again, the forces are different. Every crash is different. I'm gonna keep going back to that cliche saying. So low speed crash is bad, but inspect your seams and uh, look for any holes in your hides. And the last type of crash that we're gonna talk about is an impact crash. Now an impact could be a few different things. That could be you hit a car, you hit an, an inanimate object like a wall or a tire barrier, or maybe you're on the ground and you get hit by another rider, which is my worst fear. Now, impacts are fairly simple. Lateral forces are going to crush armor. They're going to really pull at seams. Once again, that's gonna be something we keep going back to and I'll, I'll tell you why here in a little bit. So check all the seams, look at all the seam holes, remove the armor and inspect that for any breakage or tearing. Finally, take the inner liner out of the suit and make sure it didn't tear away from the outer shell at any point. So just a general check over, especially in the impact area, of course, anywhere that a tire, for instance, if you're hit, may have torqued a panel, you're gonna to wanna to look at all the seam holes to adjacent panels. Okay, so now that we've talked about the different types of crashes, and we have thoroughly inspected your item. Let's talk about how you can repair your gear. Fortunately, almost everything is repairable. Uh, you can even fix some of it right at home. I actually did a video just a couple weeks ago about how to recolor your leathers at home in the event of a light crash and some scuffing, and I'll post that link up here. Let's walk you through some of the inspection process and those subsequent repairs. And let's first talk about seams, because when I was talking about the crash types, we kept talking about seams and seam holes, 
And obviously that's one of the most important things when it comes to inspecting your gear. And it's not only important because it's a safety item, obviously these are the threads that literally hold your leather together on your gear, but it's also important because it's easily overlooked. It's easy to look at a suit, paint over the scuffs, and, and make sure there's no holes in it, and then just say, all right, we're good to go, but you're missing just like a section of five stitches. That little section of five stitches, even though the leather's still held together by a secondary seam possibly, um, is really going to compromise your safety in the event that you have another big incident on that same area. I've seen many cases where a rider has completely slid and, and worn through a seam, a structural, critical structural seam on a suit, and they continue to ride in the gear because it just looks like everything is good. I mean, from, from afar, it, it looks like the suit is structurally together. You can grab it, you can pull it, it's held together internally, everything good. But you gotta look for missing stitches and you gotta have them addressed by a professional. Have them run back over that stitch with a sewing machine. And uh, you know, it's quite simple and it doesn't cost you very much money. Uh, just make sure that they're using the appropriate thread when they put everything together, a good, strong nylon leather thread. Now the most obvious damage in any crash situation is of course going to be scuffs and holes in the hides of your leathers or your gloves or boots. And uh, you know, it's the thing that most people are concerned with. Obviously you see a hole in your gear, you know you're gonna have to get it addressed, but honestly, um, you know, that's pretty easy to repair in most cases. You can just have a patch installed by a professional. Uh, you can even stick a patch on from the front and back. You can stick a piece of leather there just to get you through the weekend, but you're definitely gonna wanna have it stitched together by a professional. And again, shouldn't cost you very much money. Now, in some cases, you're going to look at the panel and say, Mm, probably go ahead and replace the entire panel. That costs a, quite a bit more money, obviously, uh, but it's definitely the way to go in some cases. You don't just want to be running around with a haphazard repair, especially when it's an important panel, like an arm or elbow or uh, the back or something like that. Let's go ahead and get it replaced altogether. Armor. Let's talk about armor. In rare cases, the armor in your suit can be damaged. So just make sure you pull it out every now and then and check it out after a bad tumble. Even without crashes though, interior armor can degrade. It can become less protective over time. And we just recommend inspecting your armor pads every season. Make sure it's not hardening or becoming brittle. And you'll actually sometimes start to see the armor flake apart. Um, you know, you have a kind of a dust in there and it should be, it'll be dry. It should be pliable and soft in most cases, uh, or hard and rubbery and firm, depending on the type of armor that you have. At any rate, inspect it. If there's any question, make sure you contact a professional and get their opinion on it. Lastly, we're going to talk about zippers. Now, zippers, even the big chunky metal ones, uh, they can be damaged over time by normal use. They'll just kind of wear. But if you have a single crash incident that has the appropriate amount of torque in the wrong spot, you can compromise a zipper instantly. Now a nylon or plastic zipper, if it pops open once, it's compromised. It's never going to work the same again. You may be able to get it back, go back together, but it, chances of it coming apart again are very, very good. So make sure that you get that replaced because it's probably gonna let you down again soon and it's always gonna be like third call on your most important race of the weekend. So again, get it assessed by a professional. Damaged or weakened zippers should be replaced. Again, I'm just going to touch on cosmetic damage real quick because I did do a video a couple weeks ago talking specifically about how to repair cosmetic damage at home. All you need is some leather cleaner, leather prep, sandpaper, acrylic paint. I won't get too deep into the process uh, because I want you to watch that other video. But if you're like me, you want the gear to look as good as possible. So safety is, of course, job number one. But second to that is looking good when you're out there. Um, now, beyond the scuffs, other items that can be cosmetically damaged include external protectors like your shoulder, elbow, and knee armor. Uh, depending on the brand or type of protector, you might be able to replace only the branded portion of the protector. For instance, some of our bison shoulder protectors feature a rubber panel with a bison logo that can be removed and replaced at home using a glue. If the parts are not serviceable in that way, you just need to have the entire item replaced by a professional. Here's a question that we get a lot, and that is, when is gear deemed unrepairable? When should you replace it? Now, I've been asked more than once, 
if, when somebody brings something to me, is this even worth repairing? And you know what? The answer to that is really complicated because like anything else in life, at some point, it just may not be cost effective to repair it. It's more of a cost effectiveness thing. So things that you should consider when determining whether to repair or replace your gear would be the age of the gear. Because generally speaking, the older your gear is, the more prone it is to damage in a crash. Leather and stitching become less pliable over time. Uh, they become more brittle and therefore less safe. A professional assessment can help you determine if your gear is aged beyond repair, but in some cases, a good cleaning and conditioning can help bring it back to life. And again, we have a video for that, and I'll link it here. The second thing to consider is the number of prior repairs. Uh, over time, with enough repairs, your gear might kind of look like a hodgepodge of panels. And we recommend using the same repair shop for all of your repairs because they'll get to learn your gear, they'll know exactly what was done in the past, and they can tell you if they see any other concerns along with the repairs to your prior work. So they can really look everything over. It's like taking your car to the same mechanic. Over time, they see a little oil leak. They know to go back and see if it's gotten worse. Same holds true for your gear. The third thing to consider is the severity of the crash in question. Because let's face it, one crash, one single crash can kill a suit or jacket, especially a helmet or gloves even. One crash on gloves can sometimes just destroy them. So replacing multiple panels, especially on something like a glove, can really add up. And at some point, you just might weigh the difference between buying new gear as opposed to repairing it. Again, your expert consultant, your repair shop, can help you determine the best course of action. So there you have it. Hopefully this video helps you get back on track safely and looking as good as possible. Um, you know what we see too often firsthand is that following a crash, the motorcycle and the rider get all the attention. And rightfully so, but the gear kind of gets removed and tossed to the side a lot of cases. And then it's not until the last possible moment the rider gets dressed to go back out. We realize that he or her has a problem with the suit or gloves or boots or whatever it may be. So it's important to check your gear immediately after an incident. That way you make sure that there's nothing wrong before you get redressed. But on top of that, when you crash, you kind of have a pretty vivid memory of what happened. You put it all together in your head. Uh, that tends to deteriorate over time. You start to lose the details. That's why it's important to inspect your gear immediately after an incident because everything's fresh in your head. You know exactly how far you slid, at what speed, when you started tumbling, what panels of your gear hit the ground. So it's going to be a lot more of a thorough investigation when you go back to play CSI with your gear and figure out what might have been damaged. I've seen firsthand pro riders go out on track with seams duct taped together on their suits. I saw a rider go out with no palm at all in the leather of a glove. Uh, it's just really crazy to me. So make sure not only that you are inspecting your gear following an incident, but check it every couple weeks. After every weekend, let's just look it over Make sure that all your seams are good. Make sure the leather is nice and pliable and uh, doesn't need conditioning. If it does, address that with our video. Um, it's just really important that you take good care of your gear because it's going to last you a long time if you do that. But most importantly, it's going to keep you as safe as possible the next time you have an incident. And if you don't care for your gear, you are putting yourself at risk straight up. As always, if you have any questions about your gear and how to care for it or inspect it, be it bison or not, definitely send us an email, info at bisontrack.com. You can call us at the phone number below. You can respond to us on social media, message us. You can respond to this video. We'll, re we'll reply to you here. So this is our passion. It doesn't matter if you're in bison or not. We're here to help. Uh, but when it comes time for your next one, if you're not in bison, definitely uh, keep us in mind. With all that being said, guys, thank you for watching. If you liked this video and it was informative, please click the like button because it does help us a lot. It helps us get in front of more moto enthusiasts. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications because we're always coming out with cool, informative new stuff like this. As we say here at Bison, go fast, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.